Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the long run Phillips curve. In this video we will examine the long run Phillips curve, sometimes called the accelerationist theory of inflation. In order to do this we're going to start out with a diagram here on the right hand side which is very similar to the short run Phillips curve having up here an inflation rate on the y-axis and the unemployment rate down here on the x-axis. Now we're going to introduce a couple of new concepts here. We're going to say that in the long run and on this diagram on the right hand side that the expected inflation rate, now we're talking about inflation that's expected by the population. So the expected inflation rate is equal to zero and this is the exact same as actual inflation. So expected and actual are the exact same thing. We are also going to introduce the concept of the natural rate of unemployment. So we're going to say that the natural rate of unemployment is equal to the actual rate of unemployment. So what is this natural rate? Well, the natural rate of unemployment is the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, sometimes referred to as NAIRU, so the non-accelerating uh, level of unemployment. Now, what this says is, it says that the natural rate is the rate at which the economy is growing at its potential level, and at this level, there's no tendency for inflation to increase. So there's no pressure on inflation in this case. Okay, so previously, what we have seen is that there was a trade-off in the short run between the inflation rate, which could reduce, and then unemployment would increase. So a natural trade-off over here. In the long run, we say that there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. And in order to show this, what we're going to have to describe is something that happened in the 1970s. And during the 1970s, there was a particular period in macroeconomic history whereby there was something called stagflation. And stagflation just means that there is a rise in inflation and the economy in terms of growth is decreasing. So GDP is falling and inflation is rising at the same time. So we have two uh, opposing factors happening. So with stagflation, this tended to break down the Phillips curve because it showed that there wasn't any trade-off between inflation and unemployment at this time. As inflation was going up, unemployment was also going up. So it showed a positive relationship between both. Uh, two economists, Friedman and Phelps, came up with a theory to explain this. And what they suggested was two things. Number one, they suggested that we should introduce into the model something called price expectations. So number one change to the model is price expectations here. So what do we mean by these price expectations? Well, what we mean is the following. We mean that in terms of price expectations, we say that workers take into account what they expect the inflation rate to be, and they'll base their wage demands on this. So, for example, if the inflation rate ex is expected to change, well, what we should have is a change in the wage rate as well, because workers will demand higher wages. And this in turn, even if inflation wasn't a change, this in turn will cause inflation to change. So if inflation expectations were to rise, this would mean that wages would tend to rise as well, which would mean that inflation would also rise. So price expectations is a key new feature of our model here. The second change that they made in terms of this theory, so change number two, is in terms of this concept we just mentioned, UN, or the natural rate of unemployment. So the natural rate of unemployment is a key concept, 
and what we are going to say is so where the actual rate of unemployment ut is greater than the natural rate of unemployment what this tends to do is put downward pressure on wages and that puts downward pressure on the inflation rate so we have unemployment greater than its natural rate putting downward pressure and what we also tend to see is the opposite where the actual rate of unemployment is less than its natural rate this tends to put upward pressure on wages which also puts upward pressure on the inflation rate and what we will see is this in terms of our Phillips curve over here so our traditional Phillips curve shows a trade-off between unemployment and inflation whereas our modern one will tend to show just no relationship whatsoever between them so what we are going to do is we will start off with a couple of the expectations and assumptions taken into account so where expected inflation is equal to zero and that's equal to actual inflation we'll start off on our graph on the right hand side at zero we'll put in point a here and we'll also say that while this is zero percent in terms of actual and expected inflation it's four percent in terms of the unemployment rate and we're going to say that that 4% actual unemployment is the same as the natural rate. So at this point, actual and natural unemployment are the exact same thing. We are now going to say that the government, for some reason, maybe on the run up to an election, uh, starts out a policy of expansionary fiscal policy. And this means that their spending increases, their taxes might reduce, that causes aggregate demand to increase and that should create jobs and reduce the unemployment rate. So let's say the unemployment rate reduces back to 2%. Now bear in mind this is the actual rate of unemployment. The natural is still at 4 so the actual is now below the natural rate. And what tends to happen here is when the actual rate of unemployment is this low there starts to be a scarcity of workers, wage demands start to increase, and hence, on, uh, hence inflation increases. So what we see here is, when the actual rate is very low, it puts increased inflationary pressure on. And let's say inflation now rises to 2%. Okay, so this tends to look like our general short run Phillips curve. We have a trade off where we are looking at unemployment reducing and inflation rising however now we see what happens when we take into account price expectations and let's say that two percent inflation is in year 2018 well wage demands in 2018 were based on zero percent expected inflation because we base our expectations on what happened last year so workers expected 0% inflation and it actually turned out to be 2%. What we would know with certainty is that workers would want to, in the following year, 2019, they would want their wages to increase by at least 2%. So over time then, in 2019, what we see is increase wage demands and this in turn will increase inflation. So inflation now goes up to point C, which is 4%. So in 2019, inflation is 4%, not because of fiscal expansion, but because of adaptive wage expectations and adaptive inflation expectations. So now workers demand 2% higher wages. That increases inflation to 4%. But, and I'll show you the issue here, if we go, let's say, 2020, Workers again base expectations on last year. Last year, inflation was 2%. They demanded that as a pay increase, pushing wages up to 4%. So next year, what they're going to demand is an extra 4% hike in their wages. So now we go up by 4% up here, up to 8% inflation at point D. 
Again, nothing has changed on the fiscal side. That's, that initial stimulus has stayed the same. The only issue is that actual unemployment is continuing to be less than the natural rate. And this gap increases wage demands. And when wage demands increase, prices increase as well. So if we went up to 2021, we'd see that inflation would accelerate even more up to 16%. And we have here our short run Phillips curves going through each of these points. But in the long run, we can see that inflation is accelerating. The only way to reduce this is to bring actual unemployment back to its natural rate, which would involve, for example, contractionary fiscal policy by the government or maybe contractionary monetary policy. And what this would do is reduce demand in the economy. Demand reduction would cause uh, unemployment to rise. And what we would see is unemployment would rise back up to our 4% here, which means that when we join up our point A and our point D, we have what we call the long run Phillips curve. So if I join these two dots up we have our long run Phillips curve and we'll just call it that long run Phillips curve showing that in the long run there is no relationship between the inflation rate and unemployment so there's no trade-off in this case which is another version of monetary neutrality so these policies here have no effect on a real variable such as unemployment in the long run they simply increase the price level and this can accelerate up until the point of contractionary fiscal or monetary policy until the actual unemployment rate returns to its natural rate until this time we will have accelerationist inflation when this is reached where actual equals at uh, a natural rate then inflation uh, stays at a stable point and we have our long run phillips curve our vertical line in this case i hope you call back to cultnomics soon bye for now